So how do you become a web developer with no experience? I mean, it's 2018 and there are still people who are unhappy with their jobs. They're not making the kind of money they want to make. And if they could switch into IT, they would. But how? I mean, can you go from being in food service or customer service to a full-fledged web developer? Well, that's what I'm here to talk about. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anissa Deanna, here to give you a full serving of Blurred Lifestyle. Specifically today, we're gonna get into how to get that job, that web developer job, when you really don't have the experience that you know you're gonna need. But before we get started, I wanna make sure we're all on the same playing field on what is web development. I mean, a lot of people still think it's just static websites. You just go there, get information, and dip out. But really, there's a lot more to it nowadays. Uh, web development and making web applications means that you're building something that is interactive. When you click a button, what does it do? Does it have a form? Because that's what you, you're going to build. It's going to connect to a database. There's going to be a way for you to interact with Twitter or Instagram through their API. All of that stuff is web development. So let's get into it. Oh, wait, wait. I just want to point out that I'm not a designer. I don't know how to make your stuff look pretty. I'm all back in. Making it look pretty is front end. That's not my forte. If you want to learn more about that, it's called web design, I think, or UX UI. So look that up and maybe I'll find somebody who can explain that a little bit more and post it below. All right, let's get into those steps. Okay, so first things first, you're going to want to learn how to use the terminal. If you don't know what that is, you're going to want to know what it is first and then learn how to use it. When I first got started about three years back, um, I started learning Python and I used the tutorial from Learn Python the Hard Way. He says it that way, but really it's probably the best way to learn. He has an appendix A in there and it goes through the terminal first and you're expected to know how to navigate uh, your whole entire computer through the terminal. So I'm going to post that below and that's the best place to get started. Alright, so step two, pick a coding language and learn it. I would definitely say the best coding languages for newbies are Python or Ruby. They're very user friendly, they use a lot of English syntax making it easier to learn and then once you learn those, learning other languages are very easy. Um, learning a first coding language is really about understanding logic because that's really what coding is, it's a logic based thing. You really don't need to know uh, physics or rocket science, it's really about how would you approach that problem. And then once you learn a language, I would definitely learn JavaScript. It is the language of the web, and as a web developer, you're going to need to be able to use it to interact more with the uh, DOM. Look that word up. So, I also want to say that you don't need to go back to school to learn a coding language. There's so many resources online for you to pick up a coding language and teach yourself on your own, especially if you don't have the funds to put back into school and to get student loans and all that stuff. I would definitely suggest picking an online um, curriculum that's free and that you can teach yourself on your own. Um, However, if you do have funds or if you're willing to try to get a scholarship, I would go my route, which was a coding boot camp. I personally need a school environment to learn. I can't focus on my own, and that's why I chose to go to a coding boot camp. But in the beginning, I did teach myself Python, so you gotta pick what works best for you. I'll post all the links for the different types of resources below. Check them out. Step three, learn Git and get a GitHub account. This is the proof of your experience. This is your portfolio. And in many cases, this is your resume. So Git is a software. It is what's called version control. So with Word, um, with a Word document or Excel spreadsheet, you can save it. It creates a version of what you put. And then you can save it again and again and again. But if you save it under the same name, then it erases. With Git, you can pretty much save it under the same name and it just takes a snapshot of each version, one after the other. And then you can go back in time and see what the first version looked like, what the second version looked like, or what the third version looked like, and start from any version. It's really cool. It helps when you're working in teams and a lot of businesses use it. And a lot of people expect you to know how to use Git. 
Now GitHub is like Dropbox, but for code. It lets people view your code if you make it public and it helps with that collaboration because somebody can take your code, put it on the computer, add stuff to it, and then put it back on GitHub for you to review and integrate into your code. It's really cool. I would definitely check it out and I'm gonna put links to it below. So yeah, learn that. Step four, practice, practice, practice. I wanna suggest checking out HackerRank. That can definitely be a second portfolio for you, but they're really good at giving you algorithms. Algorithm sounds like a big word, but really it's just recipes for solving a problem. So if you wanna learn how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, the algorithm would be uh, get a knife, get bread, get peanut butter and jelly, and so on and so forth. That is the algorithm. You're pretty much telling the computer the steps to making something. So HackerRank is really good at giving you those problems so that you can practice and practice and practice, but it also is a place for you to store that practice so that jobs can see what you have done. And that's why it's a really good source uh, for helping you get that experience and showing people that you have experience. I would also suggest uh, Code Wars. I'll put a link for both of these below, but Code Wars is more practice. You can see your answers and you can see other people's answers to common questions. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about this later on and why this is so important to learn algorithms. All right, so five, go to conventions and meetups. Talk to people, get to know them, get to know people in the industry, and pick which ones you go to wisely. There are so many conventions and there are a lot of meetups, but go to them. Because in this industry and in most industries, it's not always what you know, but it's who you know that's gonna get you the job. A tip for conventions is to, again, pick them wisely because they, they do cost a lot of money sometimes. But there are scholarships if you um, don't have the funds to go. So go to their website early, look up if they have any funding or scholarships, and apply to those. As far as meetups, if you're afraid to go and meet strangers on a Thursday night, take a friend. Um, just let them know, hey, I want to go to this, I want to check it out, please come with me. It's just this, you don't have to participate. Just come on along. A lot of people will be happy to go just to learn about it themselves or just to be a good friend. But there are a lot of meetups. I'll put a couple below that I go to or that I have been to and that I think are really good in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. Step six, be willing to work for free. I know, I know, we're trying to make that bank, right? But you need that experience and that's honestly what you're gonna get paid in, experience. So you wanna freelance, you can try to get paid for it, but the idea is experience. You can um, work for family and friends, like make them a project that they've been dying to have, make them a website with a lot of different buttons and forms and database stuff, um, or find an open source project that you can contribute to. A lot of companies rely on people to contribute code for free. It's called open source. That means it's open to everybody to pick up an issue that they find, solve it, and then put it into their code. Um, it's really a good thing actually, and it looks good on your resume if you have it. All of these things give you that experience. They give you things to talk about during an interview, and they look good on resumes, and that's what you wanna go for when you're first starting out. Doing things that will look good on your resume, that you can put in your portfolio, that you can say you did, and show them that you know what you're talking about. So don't just brush off the free things. They're really gonna get you to where you need to be. And don't think you have to do it forever. Do it for a month, do it for two weeks, do it at a convention. A lot of free stuff is just there to help you, honestly. So do that, please do that. Step seven, organize your resume appropriately. So this is where most people, they list jobs and they think they have to have a job as a web developer to get another job as a web developer. That's not true. You need experience as a web developer to get a job as a web developer. And this is where the other steps 
that I showed you before are gonna become important. This is where you say, I have experience in an open source project. This is where you're gonna say, I went to this convention and I did this workshop and we did this there and I have experience in this. This is where you're gonna say, oh, my friend, or you don't have to say my friend. You're gonna say, this person have a project, I work on this project and this is what I did. This is where I shine toot your horn if you don't do it nobody else is gonna do it toot your horn show what you did if you worked in a team you work well in teams if you organized it you're good at organizing if you open, committed to an open source project this means that somebody was like oh my gosh their code was good I'm gonna put it into my code and then we're gonna push it up so that everybody can see what they did please take this opportunity to shine, especially if you're a woman. Women have a um, thing where they think things have to be perfect. They don't. You just want to show that you can do the job and do it well, and other people think you do it well, okay? So, organize your resume. If you need help, post those questions below, and maybe I'll even do a, another video on that. Let me know if that's something you wanna see. Anyway. Reorganize that resume and let's go to step eight. Okay, so step eight, practice common interview questions. So a lot of industries, you're gonna wanna do this in anyway. Like, I'm not sure why people go in not having practice. This is gonna help you in moments where you just freeze and you can't remember what to say or it's gonna help you say the right thing because honestly, there are right and wrong answers. Even though this is from your experience, there's a better way to say the answer that you wanna give. If you wanna learn more, more about this, let me know and I'll give a video on uh, interview questions. Now, specifically for this industry, you're gonna wanna practice algorithms. I think I mentioned it earlier where it's just a recipe for solving a problem. But in these interviews, they're gonna expect you to get up and solve that problem on a whiteboard. I don't know if you remember going to school and having to write on the board in front of the whole class, but yeah, that's what they're gonna do to you. It's to test to see if you really know the coding language, it's to test to see if you're willing to think out loud, to ask questions. Because yeah, you do, you ask, you ask those questions. You say, well, I'm not familiar with this, but this is how I would go about it. And that's what they're expecting. They're expecting you to try, to not give up, um, and to know what you're talking about, really. Uh, so practice those questions on hacker rank, like I mentioned uh, earlier, and practice them on Cold Wars or any resource that you may find online to just practice, 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 and get used to algorithms. Um, it's really gonna help you, and honestly, it really supplements what you don't, what you haven't learned in, in a school, in a regular college setting. This is gonna help show that you don't need to go back to college, you learn great on your own, you're gonna work great on their team. So step nine, apply to a job or a few jobs that you don't really want. Why? Because this is your opportunity to practice. You don't really care about it, so you're more relaxed. And that's good because now you can be more confident. This is your opportunity to learn the interviewing styles of different people and to practice how to approach those situations. This is your opportunity to whiteboard for the first time or the second time and get familiar with how things work. This is also your opportunity to interview the company because interviews are actually a conversation between two, two people. It means that it's not just them interviewing you, you're interviewing them as well. You want to know what their company is about. Is about. You want to know, are you a good fit for them and are they a good fit for you? This is your chance to weed out what you really don't like about certain industries so that you can find the company that you really want to work for. And when you get to that company, now you've had experience interviewing, you're more confident, you know what to expect, and you come off as somebody who is ready because you are. So step 10, and this goes for any industry you're in, I don't care where you are, send a thank you letter after your interview. Why? Because this is your second opportunity to make a good impression. This is your opportunity to remind them of who you are and how awesome you are. This is another chance to toot your own horn. Yay! Please send a thank you letter. Okay, so another thing is that 
If you made a mistake during your interview, a thank you letter is an opportunity to correct that mistake. Maybe you didn't do so well on your whiteboarding. This is a chance to say, you know, I felt like I didn't do that well. This is how I would go about it. Dot, 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 dot. This is, this is what I would do and this is how I would shine. This is your opportunity to say, I work well in teams. I do this, I do that, and I really love your company. Um, so please, <laughs> write a thank you letter. All right, those are my 10 steps to becoming a web developer without any prior experience. This is pretty much the path I took and I suggest it to other people. And if I can do it, y'all can do it too. Also, if you have any questions that, that are still lingering, go ahead and comment below. And if you really like this video and you want to see more, subscribe. All right, talk to you later. Bye.